you play uh, Yakira, a rebellious teen dealing with an issue of loss, basically, uh, what was it that pulled you towards the character? And was there any similarities in for, with your character, with your own teenage background? Yeah, well, uh, Yakira, she is, she's complex, she's heartfelt, she's flawed, but she's a good person. You know, she does some pretty crazy things and some bad things, but, you know, ultimately she's trying to do a good thing. She just wants to connect with her sister um, before they separate. And um, that just really drew me to the film and, and her fire and, and this rebellious streak that she had. I just thought she was really cool and similar to myself. I could see a lot of me in her. Yeah. with these types of characters as well especially in other films they aren't really likable like shall we say but you you excellently showed her vulnerability um from the very beginning was it quite an exhausting shoot yeah it was we shot the film in 10 days That's which, short. <laughs> yeah, which is very short we're running from one setup to the next it was really intense, it was really crazy, but at the heart of it, it all just came together and it sort of reflects the film in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, how do you keep up that uh, momentum? You know, you're constantly running around all the time. How do you keep up that energy? Coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> the answer to everything. <laughs> Um, so Lily Rose, who plays your younger sister, she comes across as quite a scrappy little fighter. Um, how is it filming those scenes with her, considering she's so much younger than you? Um, yeah, it was great. I mean, she's, she's like a mini adult, Lily, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Child actors sort of are. They're super, super professional. She was fantastic to work with. Um, I also lived with Lily while we shot the film. So we really got to know each other and we're in each other's faces quite a lot. She, she's just great. And um, yeah, one thing about Lily is Lily, Lily is a growing girl and I had to carry her downstairs at one point and into the back of the car. That was the most challenging part of the film for me. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that and I was like, actually, she looks just as big as you do. It's like, uh, just as tall as like, how did she manage to take her downstairs? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> um, and there's also there was one scene where I actually got quite animated uh, when uh, and I wanted to punch the cyclist that pulled you off the bike. Um, that looked like a pretty hard a scene to do. I mean, do you do your own stunts? Right. So that scene, I didn't do that stunt, but I did do the other stunt, you know, the log running and all that yeah. stuff. I did that. I didn't do the pulling off the bike bit. That was a girl came in and did that bit for me. <laughs> yeah, that looked a bit vicious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, going forward, would you, I mean, do you want to do more like stunt work as well? Because, you know, mm. it, 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 I think it gives it that, that extra uh, personal element to the film. Yeah, I would love to do more ac action stuff and stunt work. I've been training down at, well, when the gyms were, were open, I was training down the gyms and stuff like that, just preparing myself in case anything does come up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you actually filmed this before Bridgerton and it was your first lead role as well. So what did it mean for you to pick up the Best Actress Award for, at the British Urban Film Festival? Oh my God, it literally meant everything. I cannot even tell you it was just fantastic it it was a dream come true I really 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 wanted to whip like win something for this film and um to be supported especially by the British Urban Film Festival who do so much for actors and filmmakers of colour to be recognised by my own community for my work is just incredible what a win yeah especially for your first lead as well yeah it's quite overwhelming I would have thought <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah <laughs> um you, you've never had that um professional stage school uh training should we say so going from a contemporary role to a period piece in which you finally you know a beautiful black woman like yourself wasn't playing a servant was that quite a transition between yeah, those, it was a massive, those two roles 
Yeah, it was a big transition because, I mean, firstly, I never thought that I'd be able to do a period drama unless I was playing the help. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden, Shonda's put this thing on my desk called Bridgerton, um, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's a diverse cast, you know. It was just the best, the best news, the best opportunity, um, and I just had to have it. And moving from from doing How to Stop a Recurring Dream to to Bridgerton, obviously the films are very different, but there are similarities in, in the characters. Both of these women are fiery, strong. They have, they both have a rebellious streak. They both stand up for themselves when they can. They both are trying to make their way in a world where, you know, things are going wrong for them. Um, so yeah, there were, there's a lot of similarities between the two, even, even though the worlds are so different. Yeah. Considering you're, you know, you haven't had that professional background and being a young black female as well, do you have many obstacles in getting auditions? Um, well, no, not really, I, supp I suppose. Because I think when I started acting, things sort of slowly were starting to change. People were looking for more BAME, uh, British Asian, mixed ethnic minority groups. But, you know, it was up and coming at the time, but I just started acting. So I caught that wave. So, I, you know, I got to do little bits of theatre. Um, I got to get on daytime TV and the CBBC and all that sort of stuff. So I had loads, I had loads of little opportunities. You know, things might have been different if I was white, but I'm still really happy, like no complaints with the career that I've had today. Oh, fantastic, that's good to hear. Um, and something tells me I'm not the only one that absolutely love Bridgerton. Now with season two coming, having been announced and knowing, I know you can't tell me anything. <laughs> Um, what would you like to see happening for Marina going forward? I'd love to see Marina find love. That's it. Think, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'd love to see her find love. Yeah, I think that would be a bit bittersweet. <laughs> Definitely. She deserves, everybody deserves some love. 